We are in Sunrise Estate in Wellard within the city of Quinana and this is an example of the water sensitive urban design that we have had installed within this residential estate. So this particular area of this development has some piped system discharging into the bioretention area but also closer to this POS area we have a number of examples of um, water sensitive urban design which includes the, the flush curbing along the road which allows the water close to the POS area here to sheet straight off the road and into the, the landscaped area adjacent to the road where the planting is used to strip the nutrients out of the, the water coming off the road. We also try and make the most of the opportunity to retain the, the native vegetation that was here. So there's this um, large tree beside us which we're able to keep within this development. Then as the water sheets off through the, um, the landscaping, we have a bioretention area in this area here which actually has a bubble up pit within it also where stormwater from the pipe system from further out within the development bubbles up into there and the plants treat that, um, those nutrients within that water, within that area. And that is sized to contain the one-in-one -one event and treat that, um, that frequent event within that bioretention area. So still in the Sunrise Park, we're just in a, a bit of a different area within the park. So we still have here the, the flush curbing into the, the swale area here, which treats the one-in-one the -one water. Then from that area, and same with the bioretention area on the other side, we have a, a rock pitched overflow for that area for the events greater than a one-in-five, where then the water can get out of the one-in-one -one bioretention area and, and overflow into the one-in-five area. As far as maintenance goes within the, the bioretention area, it, it's much easier for our either drainage maintenance crew or even our parks maintenance crew. When they come in, they just need to wander through there and pick up any gross pollutants. Um, rather than waiting for a pipe system where it may block up and it's not visible, then we either have to get um, gully ducting trucks in or contractors in to clean those. It's a process that takes time and it's, it's a lot more expensive to, to get a truck out here and then go and dispose of that waste rather than just picking up dry um, gross pollutants throughout the um, POS. So once that water's um, filled up to, to the level that it can flow out of the one-in-one -one area, it flows under this bridge um, over the footpath through the rock pitched area to protect from um, scouring and it flows into the, the area that's sized for events greater than one in five and that's in your active POS area. So this grass area through here will contain events greater than the, the one in five. It's a usable POS area. It's quite rare the water actually ends up in that area. The, the one in one area seems to um, contain and infiltrate majority of the, um, the events here. And, and that's quite an easy sort of maintenance area. It just requires the turf to be mowed really. We're not getting any rubbish in there. That's all captured within the, um, the bioretention area. So just in the last bit of this Sunrise POS here, um, we're in a way to our benefit, we have a system of um, sub drains. They were old rural drains that um, the agricultural land that existed here before becoming urban land and being developed, those properties were discharging into the drain. And following the urbanisation, developers are able to keep that pre-development flow going into that drain system still. So from the one in five area here, um, once this builds up to a water level that will retain within the development those pre-development water volumes, there's a stone pitched overflow here which then is able to discharge into the um, pill sub end drain and then that joins the, um, the water system there which ultimately discharges into the pill main drain and into the um, serpentine river system. So in this one in five area the, the banks have um, sort of low maintenance landscape and there's native plants um, flowering there's typically they just require reticulation for the first two years while the plants are establishing and becoming consolidated and after that the retics turned off and with the mulch and the um, seasonal water um, the plants survive and thrive and and um, yeah make the pls really good so just in the last part of this 
POS area in, in Sunrise Estate. Uh, this area is part of the larger event overflow area where water would flow out from the one in five area in behind us there and into this, this area where we've been able to retain a lot of the, pretty much all of the native vegetation. Other than putting a pedestrian path through the area, this area has remained untouched. It's always a good outcome to be able to keep some of the, as much as the native vegetation as we can. It's often quite difficult to do when developers are having to cut and fill and, and get clearances to, um, to groundwater, but it's a very good outcome where you can incorporate some of the, the native vegetation um, into the final POS area. Now we're in Living Edge Estate in Wellard East. This estate is about three to four years old now. It's quite a narrow estate, so what we've been able to do here is have a totally pipeless drainage system in this estate. So it's it's all conveyed along the, the surface. So what we've done at street level here is we, we've actually got rain gardens along the street where the one-in-one -one events will flow off the road and, and take any nutrients and gross pollutants um, along the road surface and into the rain garden. The rain gardens are, are then planted with the nutrient stripping plants. There is also um, biofilter media ins installed in the bottom of the rain gardens and the street trees are put within the rain garden as well. So what happens from there is the water flows in, it, it captures any gross pollutants, filters the water and the water will infiltrate. So once the rain garden has filled up, the water will fill up in, in the rain garden and the events greater than what the, the rain garden is sized for will just flow back out into the street through the same point that the water flows flows into it, and then it just continues to flow further down the street into the larger uh, capacity basins within the POS. And the, the curbing along the, the POS area is flush curbing as well to allow the water to, to just flow straight out into that um, POS area. The pipeless stormwater design and the use of um, tree pits and sort of the infiltration points as close to sort of the source as possible to get maximum treatment of all the water as, as soon as possible as soon as it hits the ground and also it's a much easier maintenance process for the city where our um, parks and drainage maintenance crews as they're driving through or on a scheduled basis can come through pick up any um, gross pollutants and not having to arrange for a ducting of pits and then having to um, dispose of that waste. In regards to the rain gardens in the, um, in the urban area, I guess developers have, have a number of options. They can install the filter media and all the plants up front in the rain garden and obviously they will get trashed and they'll get silted up as, as houses get built. So when majority of the houses are built, typically by 12 months time, 80 or 90% of the houses will be built. Um, the developer can then rip out what's in there and replace it. But the other option we give them and is the preferred option is at the base of the rain garden, they'll just put a geofabric or, or some sort of membrane in, just put some sand on top plant the trees so the trees can start to establish. Then once the, the construction of houses is finished and the rain gardens are full of sand, they just need to come remove the sand, remove the, um, the membrane that's been put in there and then put in the filter media and plant the plants from there and, and um, go from there. So in another part of the Living Edge estate here in Wellard East, this is a new POS. It's been in place for about six months now. So the road system is the same as the previous area we looked at. Um, it's a totally pipeless system, has rain gardens. The um, parking bays and road have flush curbing for the um, rain events to sheet out into the POS area. So there's a bioretention treatment area here, which is all planted out on the um, to my left. That retains up to the one in five year event within this swale area. The rain gardens within the street are sized for the one in one event. And to my right here is the um, Peel Sub N1 drain, which prior to this POS being developed by the developer, it was a very steep sided, um, never maintained sub drain, just inundated with trees, shrubs, grasses. The standard of the drain wasn't to a standard where it's able to be incorporated in, into an urban area. So as part of the POS development and the upgrade of the um, sub drain system, the developer has earthworked the drain 
rebatted the sides to at least one in six grades. We've been able to retain some of the native trees, so the batters are a bit steeper around the trees, but that, that has to be a balance of um, retaining trees and regrading the, um, the batters for the drain. From the development, the larger events are able to overflow into the subdrain through this overflow we are here and into the, um, the subdrain. But you can see here how the drain has been recontoured, vegetated and um, the treatment of the water and able to integrate it into sort of the POS within the, the urban area and make it such a beautiful POS, you know, attractive just for passive walks and um, just enjoying the environment. So this sub N1 drain is also part of the um, sub drain network. So this drain actually commences in the, um, the wetland area behind us and was put in place to many years ago to drain the agricultural land and, and also maintain the water levels in the regime within the, the actual wetland. This being the Peel sub N1 drain flows into the sub N drain, which um, we had a look at previously within the Sunrise Estate. And then from there, they continue on and discharge into the Peel main drain, which is a drain retained and, and managed by a water corporation, which then flows into the Serpentine River system.